Hi, people of the interwebs. It's your favorite Abana Warehouse, Sarah here with another car review. And today I have a 2020 Mercedes AMG GTR. This is the most expensive car I've ever sat in, ever touched, ever driven, ever reviewed. And honestly, I feel honored to have this opportunity for whoever thought this was a good idea to give me this car. First up, the color of this GTR is called Green Hell Mango. It is a tribute to the Nürburgring Nordschleife, the green hell part, and mango because it is tasty looking. And also, mattified finishes, I'm a huge fan of them now because I've been driving this for four days, have not washed it yet, and you can't see any dust on the paint. It's amazing at staying clean looking. This car has almost $40,000 in options added to the base price, and one of which is the carbon ceramic brake package, which I cannot wait to do the braking test in this thing because it's probably going to rip my face off. I don't know why I'm excited for that. Also, the gold colored calipers kind of look decent with the green hell mango finish and the rear badge that says GTR back there same color. It comes with staggered 19 inch front, 20 inch rear wheels. The fronts are wrapped in 275, 35, 19 inch Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s. And the rears are wrapped in 325, 30, 20s. The only thing I'm not crazy about on this car styling wise though, is these base wheels. They have like a gunmetal machine face finish, but you can get them optional done in black, which I think would look a lot better. And this thing also does have rear wheel steering as well. This is probably one of my favorite looking asses on a car I've ever reviewed. I'm a sucker for hatchbacks or shooting brakes or anything that's got this kind of a shape to it. And look at this rear diffuser down here. What's going on with the exhaust situation? You have exhaust tips out here on the sides. You have this giant one in the center. It looks like an afterburner or something. And then also you have this huge carbon fiber wing as part of a carbon fiber accessory package, also a huge chunk of change. Which includes a carbon fiber roof, super pretty and hard to film. The vents on the fender have this weird trim piece in the center of it that looks like you could just stick your fingers in there and use it to shank things with. That's violent. Also look, by Turbo V8. Storage wise is actually Quite a bit of useful space back here. I could use it for grocery shopping, as a matter of fact. I like this AMG little piece of trim metal, and then you got that carb run fry bray stretch brace. Ooh, the backs of the seats are gloss black. I just noticed that for the first time. Little thumpy boy back here in the corner. That's how you know you've made it in life when you have warm tone LED lights inside your car. That's just going above and beyond. They could have put an incandescent 194 bulb in there, but they didn't. They use the warm tone LEDs. Hope you got a tall garage if you have one of these things because this rear hatch and wing goes way up in the air, probably like seven or eight feet. Welcome to the interior of the AMG GTR. When this car was first delivered to me, this was the most difficult car for me to figure out how anything worked in here. I think it was probably because I was so nervous because of how expensive this thing is. But when they delivered it, it was parked around the edge of my driveway and they had the hazard lights on. I sat here for 10 minutes trying to figure out how to turn the hazard lights off because there are switches up here on the ceiling. You have the buttons for the heated seats, your front camera, call information and to call a wrench and sauce There's banana sauce up there also this gtr is equipped with an added on exclusive interior package which gives you little embroidered things a falter box oh that that little weird thing i'm shoving my finger in is probably to charge the key fob super smart the seats in here are a real treat. Not only are they full power, as well as they are heated buttons up there, they also have excellent bolstering, as they should because of what kind of car this is. It's, oh, it's tight. It's super tight. It sounds weird though when you slide across the Alcantara in a leather skirt. It's not a fart. Everything is done in black Alcantara suede in here too. The headliner, so soft. Oh, it's a slidey boy. That's aggressive. 
This steering wheel is also wrapped in Alcantara suede and it's got a nice shape to it. It's like square on the sides and square on the bottom. Safety feature wise, this does have a couple add-ons. It does have radar cruise control as well as lane keep assist. There is an airbag right here, right next to my face, which is a little unnerving, but I do have to say, this car feels exceptionally safe. The door jams, when you get in and out of it, are massive. It's like the thresholds in a home in Germany. Those themselves are really beefy because they're made out of stone brick material. I don't do construction, but I have lived in Germany. Take my word for it. This one is equipped with the Burmeister sound system. Sounds incredible. I'm a big fan of Burmeister now, the past Mercedes I reviewed, but this does not have the fancy, crazy ambient lights all over the place like the past Mercedes I reviewed, which was kind of sad. This is a really good looking interior, especially the center vents right here. There's four of them. Reminds me of a WS6 a little bit. I just compared a $200,000 car to a Trans Am. Top-notch automotive journalism right here. This does, whoa, vents. This does have a dual mode exhaust system. So there's a button right here as well as you can control it like 50 other different ways that will go from balanced to powerful. In the center console right here, you have eight very easy to read buttons that make driving this thing and changing stuff on the fly simple. Not only do each one of these buttons illuminate, but they're actual miniature screens that change their display based on what you do with them. Now, everything I just showed you that you can configure here in the center console, you can also configure it in the infotainment system via the little mouse trackpad right here and you can do it on the steering wheel in the gauge cluster as well because you also have a nose lift button here on the steering wheel you have your amg dynamics button and you also have the little rotary dial here for your dynamic select it's a little bit redundant just a little bit in the name of science it is now time to give it the beans before i give it the beans though i'm going to set mine in race there's also a button on the center console for your suspension. You can configure that from comfort to sport to sport plus. Lastly is traction control. So if you press it once, it puts it into sport mode, but if you hold it and then it allows you to use this little yellow dial that has all kinds of cute lights on it and you can dial in just how much traction control you actually want, which would be so fun to try that on a track. I'm going to set mine in the maximum yellow. I don't want to go up to the red because trying to give it the beans, so. Ready? To the car is worth more than the house that it's parked in. I mean, garage science with Sarah. Firing this 2020 Mercedes AMG GTR is a four liter bi turbo V8 that produces 577 horsepower at 6,250 RPM and 516 pound feet of torque from 2100 to 5500 RPM. That heat shield is crazy. It looks like something out of an aircraft application. You can see the twin turbos are mounted right here in the center valley of the V. Does this say Johan Albright? This is like an honor to have this in my garage. Like you have no idea how special this is for me right now. And there's like some air ducting that goes underneath the hood to help in cooling right here to flow fresh air right across the top of the turbos. This engine bay is so long, the distance right here from the front bumper cover just to the back of the radiator core support has to be at least a foot and a half. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me. I feel 
like I just did damage to my internal organs. Hi, I'm back. The drivetrain found on this AMG GTR is a seven speed dual clutch rear mounted transaxle. And for those of you that are unaware of what that means, basically the transmission is mounted to the rear diff instead of bolted up to the bell housing on the back half of the engine, like in most traditional front engine rear wheel drive applications. Helps with weight distribution. This also has all wheel steering and an intelligent electronic rear diff with a bunch of different settings and a bunch of different ways to adjust them. If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the coveted bean score. It is a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the AMG GTR is getting a rating of Next is the squid score. It is a new category I have created just for exotics and supercars on their ability to dart in squid around objects. It's an assessment of handling with combination of straight line acceleration. And the AMG GTR, it's getting a rating of 3.9 squids. I mean, this thing was one of the fastest rear wheel drive cars around the Nordschleife Nürburgring. I'm sure that record's constantly changing, so I am not up to speed whether it is still the fastest, but either way, this thing is ape shit around a corner. Next is the cookie score. It is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend as assessment of value, and who am I to judge this thing? This is way out of my league price-wise, so it's really hard to rate it, but I'm gonna do my best. 
This AMG GTR, as it sits with everything equipped, is getting a rating of... I think if you were just to get a base AMG GTR without any other packages added onto it, it's good value. But this has almost $40,000 in options added to it, and I think that's where you start getting a little excessive with cars like this. Lastly is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a car. And the AMG GTR is getting a rating of 4.4 penguins. It has a color named after one of my favorite places on earth, the Nürburgring. And it's not a Ferrari, it's not a Porsche, it's not a Lamborghini, it's something different. And that's why I like this. It's exotic, but it's not your average exotic car. And it feels extremely well built. So I'm a huge fan. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.